guys welcome back to my channel i hope everyone is doing great today i have five different diys for you tabletop home decor and they were all pretty simple and easy to make all the supplies again i'm using from the dollar tree and i do have this video time stamped so if you want to skip ahead to one make it a little bit more easier for you so let's get started the first one is super simple. I grabbed this four x four photo frame and these stamps from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm taking the back off the picture frame and I didn't have any cardboard or card stock. So I'm actually taking the backing that the stamps came on and I'm gonna cut that out to fit the back of the picture frame. And that is what I'm going to use when I actually use the stamps. So I did pull out my distress little stamp pad I have. I think I got it at Michael's a while ago. And then here I'm just trying to figure out how I wanna place this and which ones I wanna use. I knew I wanted to use the Enjoy Life. And I'm pressing it down and I think I pressed down a little too hard because it got on some of the edges. So when I do press it down onto the paper, it kind of transferred a little bit at the top and you'll hear, see here in just a second. So yes, here when I lift it up, you can kind of see there's a spot up top and another little spot above the word life. So I was not expecting that and instead of starting over, I decided I was just going to kind of distress it after I was done and kind of blend it in. So here I'm just finishing up the stamps. I'm using a bird and then a little feather. And here's where I'm going in and distressing it to kind of hide some of those blemishes from the stamps. But I actually like it distressed like this and I think it works really well with the frame and it matches. So I just did a cute little table top decor and you can do this several different ways and make it your own. But I do love how this turned out. Okay, for the next one, we're gonna do a small little planter. And these four squares are three and a half by three and a half inch from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going in with my stain in the English chestnut again. I think it's the only one I ever use. I do have others, <laughs> but I'm going to stain all four pieces. I did just do one side because on the other side, it was a really rough wood, but on the other side, it's smooth. So on the smooth sides is where I stained. And then I just fit it together and I'm just gonna go in with the wood glue and make it into a box. I did not do a bottom piece. I had another piece of wood. Unfortunately, it was cracked and I didn't realize it till I went to go do this project. But I still worked out in the end and it looks great. So I'm just finishing up here on the other side and I'm gonna let that set up. And the greenery you're seeing, I also purchased from the Dollar Tree. I believe they're just calling it foliage, but I love how this turned out super simple and easy to make. So let me know what you guys think down below. Next, we're gonna make this cute little tray. So I found this circle home sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using wood glue and also wood beads and the contact paper I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And my goal here was to take this off. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier, but there you can see it broke in half because I had planned on taking the home sign off and using that for another project, but that unfortunately did not work. So this is gonna be the bottom of the tray because the dips and divots that the sign left on there, so the contact paper won't go on smooth. So this will be the bottom, and then I'm gonna take that twine off, and then I'm going to get the contact paper out and I'm just gonna cut around the sign and then I'm gonna take it and actually take the backing off, go ahead and stick it on there and I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and go around the best I can and then once I get the majority of it off, I'm gonna go back in and try and even it out a little bit and this was the best process for me to hold it up on its side and then take the knife along as I go. Now I'm gonna use the wood beads to make little feet for the tray. And my wood beads, I purchased mine on Amazon. I think it was a variety pack for around $13. And I'm not gonna paint the beads or anything since the top of the tray is more like a neutral, so it blended in well. And I am going to eyeball everything I didn't measure <laughs> and it still turned out good. So I just kind of placed them where I thought they would go. 
And I did try four, but in the end, I just went with three of the beads. So once I kind of have that figured out, I'm going to grab my wood glue again, and I'm just going to glue those down to the tray and let that set up for a little bit. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really simple and cute and neutral. And they have different contact paper there as well. So you can always do this with a different pattern if you'd like. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, for the next project, you're going to need this 8x10 canvas from the Dollar Tree, this greenery from the Dollar Tree as well, and I'm using these two paint colors. I'm going to mix them together to kind of tone down that gold. So once I have that mixed together, I'm going to paint the whole canvas in that. And so you can use any color here that you would like, green, blue, pink, whatever your preference is, because that is the color that the little greenery is going to end up being. So I'm painting the whole canvas and I'm also going to do the sides because you'll be able to see the sides once you're done and I'll match the where the greenery is. So now here I am just cutting down what I want and trying to place it on there and I'm taking some tape. I'm going to tape those two together and then I'm going to take this outside and spray paint it and I'm just going to spray paint it white. Now, this did not go quite as I had planned. Um, it was windy out. Again, I don't have a garage or anything to do this in, so it really got in between there, and it was kind of hard to see the greenery piece once I was done, and this is what it looked like. So I went ahead and went with it. I was trying to save this project, so I have the greenery next to me, and on the bottom, you can kind of see where it was kind of held down and that gold is showing more through. So I'm just taking a small paintbrush and I'm going in by hand and just trying to make a little bit more marks to make it more pronounced in certain areas where the leaves would have touched. So if I were to do this again, I might try and get greenery that was a little bit more flat and hold it down as I was spray painting it. But I still wanted to show you guys this because I do think it turned out pretty cute in the end. So you guys will have to let me know what you think down below but again i think it's really cute and here i have it set up on the little tray next to the planter and you can kind of see here on the top you can still see the gold on the sides so it kind of blends in well with the little greenery on the front so i hope you guys enjoyed this one the last one, I have this cute book for you, and I'm going to be using Mod Podge, and the book is from the Dollar Tree, and I have some tissue paper and a little sponge brush that I'll be using for the Mod Podge. So I'm going to take the book cover off, and I'm going to start by putting the Mod Podge all over the front of the book, because I'm going to be placing the tissue paper on it. And then once I have it covered on the front, I'm going to go on the inside around the edges. So when we put the tissue paper over the book, it'll stick on there as well. And I am doing this in different parts. I'm gonna do the spine of the book next. I just didn't want the Mod Podge to dry on me. So I put that all over the front and then I did tear off the tissue, the excess, either cut or tear it off. And then I'm gonna fold it over the edges and then put more Mod Podge on it. And then here, it's the same process. I'm going over the spine now and a little bit of the back. I didn't do the whole back because I'm going to be displaying it laying down or on its side. You won't be able to see it. And I did this twice. So the second tissue paper, I did get a little bit smarter about it. So the top, I just lined straight up with the book and it made it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to go in with paint. I'm going to paint it white. And I thought... I grabbed white. I did not realize that it was white pearl till I'm like halfway through painting this. So here I'm realizing it's white pearl. So I'm gonna go grab my actual white paint. And again, this is personal preference. You can do any color you would like. But once I do the white, I, go, I do have to do this process twice. So I do it once in the white, let it dry, and then go back in again with the white. And I wanted to use the tissue paper to kind of give this a weathered, aged look. So once all of that is dry, I grab my black paint and this stencil. I did find this at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be 
putting the our story on there. I used a tiny sponge brush and had to be really careful not to get the leaves pattern on the side of our story. So just be careful if you are using that. And then I'm gonna go in with some rub on transfers. All of mine came from Amazon. And I do love these, they're pretty, but they are so close to each other. I think a lot of my time was spent cutting out the transfers than anything. And now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place them. Plus I was a little bit worried. I wasn't sure how it was going to work um, on the tissue paper where it's all wrinkled. This would be the first time with me working on that type of surface. And I didn't have too much problem with it. I just had to be really careful and slow. And then when I was pulling it up, I had to pull it up really slow. And then if I did see something not wanting to lay down, I would just put the clear plastic back down and go over it just a little bit more. But again, it really wasn't a big deal. And as you can see here, when I pull it up, there's a little piece right there that wasn't wanting to lay down. I just sat that back down and kept going over it. So yeah, again, pretty simple. And this, I'm gonna repeat the same process on all of this. And the tool I'm using, I've had for a while, I'm not even sure where I got it, but you can use pretty much anything around your house. So even a credit card would work well to rub those transfers on there. So again, I'm just gonna be cutting out different flowers and everything I liked and I'm going to be putting those on and I believe I said all my rub-on transfers are from Amazon. Dollar Tree they also carry rub-on transfers and they really do have some cute ones so again this is all personal preference and here I decided I was going to use some twine to go around the spine of the book. So I'm going to start on the back and I'm going to get my hot glue gun and I'm just going to start in the middle and put a little dab and let that set up. And then I'm going to start wrapping around. But I'm going to be gluing sporadically as I go to help keep it together. But I just thought the book needed some other little details for it. So yeah, I thought this would be a cute idea. And I do love how this turned out. I'd almost at one point thought about finishing it off and tying a bow at the end. I didn't end up doing that. But again, just another little idea for you using the twine around the book. So I thought it was really cute. And even if you wanted to take it horizontally around the front of the book and tie a bow in front of it that way, that would also work. So again, guys, there's like a lot of different ways you can do this, but this is just how I did mine. So I'm liking how this is looking, but I still think it needs a little bit more. So I decided I was going to try and distress this and give it a little bit more dimension and depth and help it look a little bit more aged and weathered. So when I started, I'm just using my finger. I was going in really lightly and tapping it just to see how it was going to turn out which I did end up liking it so I'm going over the edges and I'm going to go over the parts where it's kind of wrinkled and I'll go a little bit over where some of the transfers are on the edges and then I do start putting a little bit more pressure on it as I go and I'm getting more used to it but yes I thought this really helped the book a lot giving it that weathered look so Again, guys, there's so much you can do with this. I actually want to make quite a bit more. I had some other ideas going on in my head, but I love this. So you'll have to let me know what you guys think down below. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed everything and give you some ideas and inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and remember to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Bye.